your section here, right? Last session, last day, and you're coming to learn about Google Tag Manager. Well done. My name is John DiPietro. Uh, thanks for joining me. I'm going to talk about something that has really made my life so much easier, reduced so much stress, and saved me from, frankly, making a lot of mistakes and missing a lot of opportunities. So, as I go through, I have a lot of content that I'm going to cover today. And just to give me an idea of the familiarity level and where I should focus and what I might be able to go a little quicker on, just like to do a quick poll, ask a couple of questions. So first of all, how many people here are using Google Tag Manager right now? How many have heard of it but are not using it? Okay, and how many have never heard of it before today? Okay, it's kind of, that's kind of the mix that I expected to see today, so that's good. Um, okay, so somewhat different question. How many of you right now uh, either own or manage a website that pays for traffic, whether that's Google, Facebook, Twitter, any digital medium? Okay, not that many. Um, that's an important aspect of, uh, of what you can do with Google Tag Manager. It allows you to do a lot more with, with those paid media. So, one thing I want to tell you is about the session today, I'm going to go, I've got a lot of stuff to cover, so I'm going to go fairly quickly on a lot of these topics, but don't panic. Listen more, write less, and write this down. Um, this link will is a direct download link for these slides and a couple of other resources I'll go over at the end of the presentation. I'll list exactly what those resources are. Um, it'll have links to some of the things that I'm going to talk about in here, an ebook, and, and some checklists. Um, so you'll be able to go there and get all of that material. Uh, just quickly, a little bit about myself. That's a picture of my latest prized possession t shirt I just bought. For those of you who are too young, Commodore 64 is a computer, a personal computer that came out in 1981. My parents bought it for me when I was 13 years old, so do the math. We don't have to talk about it out loud, how old I am, but um, I've actually had sort of three careers. I began as an automation engineer, which meant I used computers to control really cool things like chemical plants and gas pipelines and sewage treatment plants, which is a glorious job. Um, Moved more into software development. When I made that move into software development, that's where I started doing uh, a lot of back-end web development. So I've been working on websites for a long time. Had my own business for businesses for the last 20 years, which means I sort of morphed into doing digital marketing. So that's what I do now. That's what I've been doing personal, uh, full-time and professionally for about the last uh, nine or 10 years is, is digital marketing. My business is Liberty Digital Marketing. One of my latest projects that I'm working on and something that I'm going to use throughout the examples today is a website called Candidate Bootcamp, which is something I recently launched just a few months ago with some other people to teach people who want to run for local political office how to do it. So democratizing democracy is, is our tag, tagline. So this is what we're going to cover today. First of all, we're going to go over some of the challenges associated with managing all of these conversion codes and tags, and, and we'll talk about what that is and, and why Google Tag Manager is a good solution for that. I'm gonna talk about how to configure and plan out your Google Tag Manager implementation. I'm gonna talk about installing and testing, so how exactly do you install it, how do you test it, and I'm gonna give you some examples, and then we're going to <coughs> wrap up. So, um, one of the things I just wanted to mention, when we go over some of the examples, um, they're going to be referencing a particular strategy and a technology stack that I use. Now, um, there's a lot of different ways to solve problems, especially these days. There's dozens and dozens of, of tools and third-party solutions to solve a lot of problems. Um, a lot of people get really sensitive about, well, my solution is the best way, but um, clearly it's not because mine is. Just kidding. Um, so what you're going to see are just some examples of the way that I've tackled some of these problems, 
some of the tactics that I use, it doesn't mean it's the only way to, uh, to skin this cat. So let's start off by talking about what are tags, right? The, the talk is about Google Tag Manager, so what is a tag? Well, technically a tag is a, it's a snippet of code that sends information to a third party site. Um, without using a tool like Google Tag Manager normally, you have to grab this code from all of these third party sites. So you have to grab it, you gotta grab the analytics code from Google Analytics, you've gotta grab the pixel code from Facebook, you've gotta grab it from LinkedIn, from Twitter, from Hotjar, CallRail, all of these different tools that you wanna utilize on your website, they all have these little code snippets that you have to install. Sometimes you have to install it on every page, a lot of times you only have to install it on one page, sometimes you want to run it under different scenarios. So the way I like to describe it is, um, what are tags? Well, it begins with something happens on your website. So those some things could be the page loads. Uh, it could be that somebody f submits a form, could be that somebody clicks a link. Something happens on your website, you wanna capture information about that, and then you wanna send it off to a third party. So when that something happens, you wanna run some code. Usually what you're doing is you're pushing data, so you're collecting information about what's going on on the page right now, you're sending it to Google or Facebook or whoever the third party is. Sometimes you wanna run code on the page that modifies the page or the experience. Examples of that would be some of the A-B testing tools that are out there, um, scroll tracking, there was a session earlier today that talked about optimization that mentioned a whole bunch of these types of tools, um, dynamic phone number insertion on a web page. Those are all examples of things that would, would modify the page. And then something else happens, which is you're going to use this information somewhere else to gain insight, to track, track goals, or maybe to retarget people who have visited your website. Those are all different uh, byproducts of what's going to happen by running all of these different codes. So just to get more specific, these are just a few examples of what I was just describing uh, at, a, at a high level. So an example, Google Analytics, something happens. Could be that somebody submits their information on a form. Run some code. The code would be raising a Google Analytics event. And then something else happens. Then Google Analytics counts that as a goal conversion, okay? Uh, Google AdWords, somebody could visit or exit a landing page on your website from a paid ad that you did. Uh, what's going to happen is they're going to drop a tracking cookie in that visitor's browser and then they're going to follow that person around and you're going to annoy them on other websites with your retargeting ads. Uh, Facebook could be that somebody purchases a product. You can record a Facebook event using the Facebook Pixel, and what that will do is allow Facebook to optimize your campaign. So when you're running a Facebook ad campaign, you can optimize it according to a lot of different metrics. You can optimize by click, by impression, you can optimize by conversion. So you can tell Facebook, my goal here, what I want people to do is to download this ebook or to purchase this product. Another example is a product called CallRail. Um, that's a, uh, a call tracking solution that allows you to um, intercept phone calls and be able to track where they came from. Did they come from a particular Google ad? Did they come from organic search? From a Facebook ad campaign, it's, it's a uh, third party solution that allows you to do that. So the something happens could be that they arrive at your website from an ad that you've created on whatever channel it is. It dynamically inserts a number onto the web page, and when people call, it can track that and it redirects you to the main number. And an example of the types of, of functionality that it supports is something called a whisper message. So when somebody picks up the phone, it can actually say, call from Facebook ad, so you know where the phone call is coming from, or from Google search, whatever the case may be. All right, so why should you care about all of these snippets and these conversion events and, and whatnot? Well, um, there's an adage that says, 
in, in business, you can't manage what you're not tracking, right? So I think we all know the value of analytics, but it's not enough just to put Google Analytics on every page of your website and just use the traffic patterns. You want to really leverage the power of Google Analytics by recording conversion events and assigning value. So on this particular screenshot, this is an example where you can find out which channels are driving the sales on your website. Um, just as an example, I work with a, a, an organization that a few year, just a few years ago spent over a million dollars on revamping their website. And when it launched, they went in and they were looking at the Google Analytics and they found out, first of all, the web development company never even integrated Google Analytics into the shopping cart functionality at all. And they had to go back very painstakingly, put some code in there so that they would be able to track purchases, but they still can't track any cart functionality. So they can't track when somebody, somebody adds a product to their cart, they can't track cart abandonment, those are all features, if you're doing any e-commerce on your website, you really need to get a hold of that in order to be able to optimize the behavior of your, of your website. Um, if you're tracking all of these things and using goal completions, you can find out not only which channels are selling the most product, but which ones are achieving the goals that you want on your website. And um, another feature in Google Analytics, if you're using your goal completions and your goal values, is you're able to actually assign page values to different pages on your website so you can find out which ones are the most valuable and which ones aren't, aren't performing. And as I mentioned earlier, another benefit if you are uh, using all of these tracking codes um, correctly is that you're able to run a more sophisticated, more sophisticated types of ad campaigns on Facebook, on Google, on any of these other platforms where you can uh, optimize according to conversions rather than just clicks. So some of the challenges associated with all of these tracking codes and things that I fought with for years, um, first of all, you have to deal with icky code. So I'm a software developer, as I told you, I've been programming computers for a very long time, but I'm a grumpy old man now, and I don't want to have to deal with code if I don't have to, and Google Tag Manager allows me to not have to deal with that quite as much. Uh, another story, I've got another client where we manage a reasonably sophisticated uh, set of Google ad campaigns. And the guy that, uh, the subcontractor that manages all of these for me just a few weeks ago sent me a report and said something's fishy with this web page. Long story short, we investigated it. Just a copy and paste error from, I don't, we don't even know how many months ago, you know, the conversion code on the page wasn't working and, and we were, you know, we weren't recording leads properly. So um, this was on a, 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 an old website from before I was using Google Tag Manager. Those are the kinds of things that, that, that can happen when you're dealing with code. You miss one slash, one comma, everything breaks and, and it gets ugly. Uh, another challenge can be bottlenecks. So if this is especially true if you're working in a larger organization, if you're in, in the marketing department and you're responsible for analytics or ad campaigns or social media, and you want to get some of these tracking codes installed, maybe you've got a new campaign, maybe you've got a new tool that you're using, you have to ask the IT department to go in and modify the website, depending on the bureaucracy of your particular company, it might take a day, it might take a month. So that can create bottlenecks. Uh, organization. So if you are you know, uh, at all complicated and your marketing funnels are the types of, things you're, you're, types of things you're trying to track, these conversion codes can add up very quickly. This is the, the Candidate Boot website, Candidate Bootcamp website that I was referencing earlier. Um, I've got 63 different tags configured, so how do you keep them organized? Uh, what about versioning? Uh, what if there are different groups that are working on these tags? Those are all challenges that are associated with, with this code. Debugging can be a challenge. Okay, if you've got 
again, whether it's Google Analytics or Google AdWords, code, figuring out, troubleshooting JavaScript on a website can get very ugly. There are, there are tools that can do that, but uh, Google Tag Manager has some neat features to, to help you there as well. So how exactly does it help? Well, first of all, it abstracts function from code. So what I mean by that, in software terms, you know, abstract means sort of hiding the complexity. And that's one of the things that Google Tag Manager does really well. This is a screenshot of how you would set up a Google AdWords remarketing snippet through Google Tag Manager. You can see it's as complicated as typing in the conversion ID and you're done, and, and picking the trigger and you're done. So it simplifies things. Uh, breaker of change. So those bottlenecks that I mentioned before, once you get Google Tag Manager installed on a website, then you're largely free at that point as a digital marketer to separately, without needing further help or work from your IT department or your web developers, you can make changes to the cows come home. And it all flows through that one Google Tag Manager snippet that you put on your website from the beginning. And you can use the GTM interface to create campaigns, create new tracking codes, whatever you need to do. Uh, it has some great management tools that allow you to organize. So that long list of, of 63 snippets that I showed you earlier, Google Tag Manager has some tools to allow you to organize that. We'll show you that a, a, a little bit more. It has a lot of out-of-the-box integration. So when you want go in to create a tag, there are lots of, of uh, third-party tools, like the AdWords one that I just showed you on the previous screen, where you just select whichever one it is, and you just add in a couple of, uh, fill in a couple of fields, and it generates the code for you. You don't have enough, even have to copy and paste any of those. And it has some uh, very handy debugging tools, which I will, again, in more detail a little bit later. So, that's a little bit about what are some of the challenges that GTM fixes and uh, why you would care. So, now I'm going to get into configuring it, but before we talk about the specifics, I just want to mention quickly that you'll do yourself a favor if you do some planning ahead of time before you just jump in, um, because I've been using uh, GTM for a couple of years now, and I've kind of learned the hard way the importance of planning this stuff out ahead of time. So there are a few things that you want to do, one of which is just do an inventory. So what are the tracking tools uh, that you need to account for? What remarketing are you going to do? Are you using A-B testing tools? Are you doing call tracking? So what are all of the third-party tools that you want implemented on your website or that you're currently using? on your website. Just make an inventory of them. And the other thing you want to do is think through your funnel. So this image, the download that I mentioned earlier, has an entire ebook that describes this image in detail and, and what it all means. It's all about creating digital marketing funnels. But in terms of GTM and why this is important, there are three basic sections to this picture. The top one are the traffic sources. So you want to make sure you understand what are all the various traffic sources that are going to be coming in from Google Tag Manager. What are the different steps in your funnel that you want to track throughout your website? And then finally at the bottom, what's the return path? What tools are you going to be using through your email marketing or retargeting to send people back to the, to the website? You want to understand all of that. You want to understand your ad campaigns. So you might have one marketing funnel, but you could have multiple ad campaigns that are all a part of that funnel, and those are going to have its own stages and all of different parameters that you're going to want to capture for that. Now, the reason that you really want to think through all of those three things really is so that you can develop this, which is a taxonomy. So a taxonomy, it just it's a set of rules that you use for what are you going to call things? How are you going to describe the different conversion events that happen on your website? Um, I've come up with my own. This is a table that's just an example of some of the different stages in the funnel. 
One of the other downloads or uh, links that's included in that download that I gave you is a Google Doc, a Google Sheet that contains a template that I use for generating all of my uh, Google Analytics events, the names of the email automations that I use that get triggered for all of these events. It keeps everything consistent. And that's important because it gives you the level of, when you're going in and looking at your analytics, it gives you the level of granularity that you need, but also rolls up at a high level in a way that makes sense and, and is going to, uh, to help you. So that's just a screenshot of the template that's included in that download. So having said all of that, how do you configure Google Tag Manager? Well, you go to tagmanager.google.com and there's a little bit of a hierarchy there. So at the highest level are accounts. If you don't already have one, that's the first thing you're going to have to do is set up an account. Now, uh, a lot of you are only going to have one account. If you're an agency, you'll probably, the way that I use it is each client is a separate account within my Google Tag Manager login. And then within each account are going to be uh, containers. And, and more often than not, most of the time, one website equates to one container. So um, the most common configuration for this is going to be a lot of you are going to have one account and one container. Okay? You might have uh, subdomains. You might have uh, multiple websites within a particular account. But essentially, a, a container, um, when you create one, you're going to select the type of content. And the types that are available are web, AMP, iOS, and Android. So again, I would say nine times out of 10, you're going to be selecting the web container type. That's really what I'm focusing on in this presentation. So you have one container per website. So the next thing that you're going to configure are workspaces. Again, at least nine times out of 10, you're probably going to have one workspace. Uh, whenever you create a container, Google will create a workspace for you. It's the default workspace. Um, they not, what these do is they allow you to create multiple and different sets of, of changes within your container. So when would you use this? Um, you would use this, uh, one example would be is if you have different groups in your organization. Maybe you've got one group that is dealing strictly with analytics. And then you've got a marketing group that is working on nothing but ad campaigns. And if you set up different workspaces, they can each do their work separately without messing with one another. So you can have one group that's testing some changes and then somebody comes in and does a publish because the stuff that they just worked on is done. But the other group, their stuff's not quite done yet. So if you have two different groups you know, working separately, that's when you would create different workspaces. Uh, and then finally, another organization tool that was introduced relatively recently are folders. So this is really handy to be able to organize all of your tags. My one beef with this is that they're not hierarchical. So it's just a single level of folders that you can use to organize your tags. It's up to you how you want to use it. You can organize them by channel. You can organize them by um, stage in the funnel, which is what I usually do. It depends on, on which uh, website. Uh, what the type of website is and, and what its particular goals are. So those are all, that's how you organize your Tag Manager account. So when you actually go to create tags, if you, go, if you remember back to the beginning of the presentation, when I described what a tag was, I said, well, something happens on your website. In Google Tag Manager terms, that's a trigger. So if you want to create a tag, one of the first things you need to do is create whatever the event is that, that, that's going to trigger it. So there are different trigger types. Um, the most common is the page load, but there are other 
things like uh, clicks that can come in very handy if you have like a page uh, with links on it for different resources. You can track the clicks, uh, track the clicks on those links on the page. You can raise Google Analytics events and be able to get very specific and track and know which of those links were clicked. Um, without a tool like this, that becomes really complicated. You have to put JavaScript on all the links. Um, can get very messy. This makes it much easier. Other handy things are uh, form submissions. There's a whole list of different trigger types, but the most common is going to be page load, uh, form submissions, link clicks. The, the, those are the most common triggers uh, that are going to be used. Now, when you create one of these triggers, they have lots of different firing conditions. So, just taking the page view trigger as an example, you can fire it on every page on the website, or you can select specific pages. So this is a very powerful tool, makes it very easy to uh, manage which tags are going to get fired on which pages of your website. So there are lots of different values there that you can select from, um, page path, page URL, uh, if this triggers for a form submission. That information is in there as well. So you just go through and configure what are the firing conditions going to be. So once you create a trigger, then you're going to create the actual tag itself. So the first thing when you create a tag is going to be to choose the tag type. So I mentioned earlier there are all of these built-in tags which make it very convenient. Here's, this is a list of just a few of them. So obviously all of the Google stuff is up there at the top in terms of Google Analytics and AdWords and DoubleClick Network and Google Optimize if you're doing A-B testing. But there are a whole bunch of other third-party tools. Uh, if you scroll down this list, the, the, there's, um, I don't know, probably 30 or 40 of them. One of the other tag types that gets used very frequently is custom HTML. So if whatever tool you're trying to implement on the site is not one of these built-in lists, that's what you're going to choose, custom HTML. So a common example there would be Facebook. If you want to use Google Tag Manager to install the Facebook pixel on every page on your website, you would use custom HTML. Just copy the HTML out of Facebook into there, and it's done. So uh, again, here's just an example of if you're creating a tag from one of the built-ins. This is the, the Google Analytics uh, tag. So again, the one at the top, the page view, that's the most common one. Uh, that's out of the box. That's pretty much the first tag you're going to create in almost every case. It's just to install the Google Analytics tracking code on every page of the website. Uh, what I use quite a bit are, I use love to use Google Tag Manager to raise events in Google Analytics to be able to track things much more specifically on the website. So if you just select event from the drop-down list, then it gives you a very nice form where you just fill in the blank. What's the event category? What's the event name? What's the value? You just plug those numbers in and away you go. Uh, it's just a screenshot of, of the custom tag interface, so when you select custom, this is what comes up on the screen. You just copy and paste your HTML code, your JavaScript code, right into that window and you're done. So, after you configure the tag, tell it what tag type and put your code in there, the next thing it wants to know is, okay, when do we fire this tag? So it's going to provide you with a list of all of the triggers that you've previously created, or you can create one right here on the fly if you need to. Now one last item to introduce into the discussion are variables. So variables are just pieces of data that Google Tag Manager can pass on to whatever the third party is. And once again, they have a whole bunch of pre-configured built-in variables that you can choose from. The ones at the top are on, they're pre-selected by default. 
uh, just when you create your Google Tag Manager account. But if you're looking to create other types of triggers or other types of tags that require different pieces of data from, it's called with what they call the data layer, then you have to come in and you have to select them here. So examples would be, it's further down, if you scroll down, would be forms. So that's something I use a lot, are form to track form submissions. They're not selected by default when you create your Google Tag Manager container, so you have to come into here and you have to select them and, and turn them on so that they're available elsewhere in the interface. So, um, finally, installing and testing. Let's talk a little bit about that. So, there are three different methods that you can use to get this installed on your website. One is to use a plugin. Um, I'm going to explain. I don't typically, this is not my favorite way, with one exception, I'll explain that. You can configure them in, in your theme settings, and you can do the manual implementation in which you want to use a child theme. So the first thing you need to do is you need to grab the code. So you go into Google Tag Manager, and um, if you're using a plugin, you, all you usually need is your container ID, so you just grab that. But if you're going to do one of the manual implementations, you need to grab the actual code. So this is the only code that you're going to need to deal with, is the code to actually install Google Tag Manager on your website, you do it once, and then the beauty is you're done dealing, for the most part, with this code. All of the future changes are done through the interface. If you're going, if you're going to use a plugin, the one that I use is called uh, Duracell Tony's Google Tag Manager for WordPress. I don't recommend this unless you're using WooCommerce on your website or you want access to the data layer. I say WooCommerce, but pretty much any e-commerce solution where you want to do detailed cart tracking. Okay. Um, the short answer is I just, by experience, this has been the least problematic. What I will tell you is this is not your typical plugin, and what I mean by that is it's not trivial to install and configure. If you get that download that I gave the URL for. I have a link in there to the plugin page and a support article that walks you through step by step for configuring it. So it, it, it's not a breeze to install like, like a lot of uh, plugins are. This is one reason. This is, again, this is that plugin. If you want to make it work, in my experience, the best way you have to actually add that PHP code into your template. So if you do that, obviously you want to do it in a child theme. You don't want to go in and edit your actual theme because when you do an update, you'll lose it. So the second option, this is really the easiest way to go. If it's available to you, this is going to depend on what theme your website is using. A lot of themes these days, most themes have a configuration uh, space for you to just put in tracking code. So this screenshot is just an example of uh, the Divi theme from Elegant Themes. It's got uh, spots in there where you can put the code in. This is a screenshot of the uh, Avada theme and where you go in to put your tracking, in co tracking code in, in that particular theme. And then this is just an example of that third option. If you're going to, um, sometimes you have to actually implement it in the theme itself. And if you do that, like I said, you, you want to use a child theme. So one thing I highly recommend if you're going to be using uh, Google Tag Manager is to get this Chrome extension. It's called Google Tag Assistant. And what that does is when you go to a website, it basically will diagnose any issues that you're having with any of the installation of the Tag Manager, the remarketing, uh, code or the uh, the analytics code. If anything's read there, you want to make sure you fix it. So that is a very handy tool that will help you know whether or not it's working properly. Um, I mentioned earlier also that one of my favorite features of Google Tag Manager is its testing ability. So it's got this thing called preview mode. If you go into Google Tag Manager up at the top right, there's that preview button. When you click that, what happens is 
when you now go to your web page and load it, it gives you this window at the bottom. And what I'll do is I'll just zoom in on that a little bit more detail and show you. It, it will actually present you with a list of all the tags that were fired and even the ones that were not fired on the page. And it has other handy tools. It will show you all of the variables. So a couple of screens ago, I showed you all of those variables that are in there that give you uh, access to the data layer. It will show you the variables on the page and what their values are. And it will even show you uh, the different events that are fired. So down there, this becomes very handy. That's an example of the e-commerce code that can send data back to Facebook or to Google Analytics or, or to whoever. So I just want to give you a few quick examples just to, to show you what this looks like in action. What are some of the things that you can do with it? I mentioned earlier, almost every time, the first thing that you're going to do is to use Google Tag Manager to install the Google Analytics tracking code. So this is what it would look like. You just go in, create a new tag, select Google Analytics. You just put in your, your tracking ID, and then you're done. So uh, I also mentioned earlier that I love using this for Google Analytics events. So if you look over on the left-hand side, you can see all you need to do, all you need to do is fill out what is the uh, event type, the category, the action, and the label, and the value. It creates all the code for you. When that action is triggered on your website, automatically raises that event in Google Analytics. Very handy. Um, another example I mentioned earlier is the Facebook Pixel. So this has to be one of those custom HTML tags where you go into Facebook, you copy the pixel code, you paste it into this window, and again, typically you're going to have it on all pages. Now, another really handy use for this are to raise Facebook events in, uh, to, to, to um, raise specific events in using your Facebook Pixel. So um, this is something Facebook introduced, I don't know, about a year and a half ago. They got they had a, a brand new version of the Pixel that they released. And um, before I started using GTM for all of this stuff, it was very complicated, very buggy, very difficult for me to, to troubleshoot. Now, as you can see, it's very simple. Um, in the Facebook interface, you can actually, it will walk you through how to create all of these different events in Google Tag Manager, and then it'll give you the code. You just copy it and, and paste it in here. I showed you this earlier. This is what a Google AdWords remarketing tag looks like in, in GTM. Very simple. All you have to do is put the conversion ID in there. Uh, this is an example. One of my clients' websites is an auto repair shop. Um, they also sell used cars. So what we've done um, very successfully is installed a, a chat widget on the used car page. So we use Google Analytics to install the uh, code for that chat widget. And the trigger is only, if you look at the bottom, it's only for page views for used cars. So I've got a, a, path, a wild card matching path in there that only fires this trigger on the pages I want it to fire on. And then finally, uh, CallRail is a tool that I mentioned earlier to do phone number uh, dynamic replacement on the web page. Again, just copy and paste the code into there, load it on all the pages, and you're done. So just to wrap up quickly, we talked about you know what are tags, why should you care, how does Google Tag Manager help, how to plan and organize, how to install and test, and I gave you some examples. So as I mentioned, I just want to show you that link again. Go ahead and, uh, and just type in that link. It's a direct download that contains this slide deck. It has that Marketing Funnels ebook on it. Uh, it has that checklist spreadsheet that I alluded to, uh, as well as some other links and resources in there. There is a uh, link to a YouTube channel that is fantastic. That uh, all, they, all the guy talks about is Google Tag Manager, and his topics range from the very basic introductions to very, very sophisticated and, and very technical uh, content. So I'm right at the end. I have 
do an announcement that um, in the want to be want to join us in the main uh, ballroom, right? There's going to be some closing remarks in there, and they're also going to be giving something. Who's giving away the TV? Blue host. Blue host. Blue host is, is going to be giving away a TV. So thanks for uh, 